Bonjour, good morning, welcome all of you. This morning we are going to have a great discussion on poverty. The topic will be like this. Poverty is of an unjust and ill-organized society. Poverty is the proof of an unjust and ill-organized society. That is the topic of discussion. I want to quote it again. Um, poverty is the proof of an unjust and ill-organized society. It is uh, taken from aphorism, thirds and aphorisms of, uh, by Sri Aurobindo. We know uh, poverty it is a great disease right now in the entire world society. Wherever you go, that is a great uh, challenge before the human society at large right now. But the thing is that it is happening and we keep seeing it at the, almost everywhere. And the, after this great pandemic like uh, um, Corona, so this, this is actually um, um, mostly found throughout. That is what we can receive, we can accept, expect and we can also feel um, its existence. Anyway, still in the course, the existence of poverty you know existence it exists existence of poverty is the proof of an unjust and ill-organized society for this ill-organized society and of course uh, it is um, explaining of the unjust um, society and our public uh, charities are but the past tardy awakening in the conscience and affair uh, robot so still in the course there must be something that must be in-depth analysis must be there the eradication eradication is the most important thing still in the course here in the it is the proof of uh, this existence of poverty is the proof of an unjust and ill-organized society and uh, our public charities whenever we feel we provide charities are but the uh, first tardy awakening in the conscience of fear rubber, rubber. Conscience of a rubber, that's what, as if you can find no conscience there in, in, inside of our, like this, we have to see. So again, that must be taken care of, we must understand what is the poverty and where really it exists and how it works really, that is the point of the consideration. That's what we want to analyze it in deep. Uh, In-depth analysis is required. Uh, then, Sri Aurobindo, next, next one, in uh, 194, the Sri Aurobindo course, course Balmiki, our ancient uh, epic poet, you know that uh, Ramayan, you, you can remember. As our ancient epic poet includes among signs of a just and enlightened state of society, not only the universal education, morality and spirituality, but also that uh, there shall be none who is compelled to eat coarse food, none uncrowned and none anointed. Um, of course, who is or who is restricted to a mean and a petty share of the luxuries. It must not be there even in the writings of the Balmiki, the great epic a poet who created Ramayana at last, at least. So, here in the course, this society must be at least of a balanced and standardized format. So, here in the course here, um, on, while quoting Balmiki on this, uh, his, his uh, um, uh, notes um, regarding the poverty, here in the course, non, Balmiki of course wrote in his great writings, non who is compelled to eat coarse food, must not be compelled, non uncrowned or unannoyated, who is restrict, or who or who is restricted to the mean and the petty share of luxuries? You can't compel him because everybody has got the freedom. They must be allowed to exercise their freedom, and of course, they must rise about their minimum on standard, on standardized uh, life. Of course, then we can find go for the next one, 195. Already we have quoted. We are at the uh, end, concluding part of this uh, Jnana portion of this uh, thoughts and aphorisms. We are going taking it in a brief manner, 195. The acceptance of poverty is noble and beneficial in a class or an individual. Here in the course here, Accept acceptance, already we have accepted. So in the course, this acceptance, there is no other way. What can't be cured must be endured. So here in the course, the acceptance of poverty 
is noble and beneficial in a class or an individual, but it becomes fatal and pauperizes life of its richness and expansion if they, it is perverted into the general or national ideal. We accept, but if we take it as a general or national idea, then naturally pauperization of the society. There must be perversion into the general and national uh, level. Sir, in the course again gives the examples of the Athens, not Sparta, two great cities uh, of the ancient time. Athens, not Sparta, is the progressive type of for mankind. Athens, not Sparta, was the progressive type for mankind. Then, sir, in the course about the ancient India, with its ideal of vast riches and vast spending, was the greatest of nations, modern India. This was the ancient India. With its um, ideal of vast riches and vast spending was the greatest of nations. So, you know, people, Portuguese people, French, of course, um, Inglo England, English people came under rule for 300 years at least, as much chance they came and became the uh, rulers. And here in modern India, with its trend towards national asceticism, Modern India, with its trend towards national asceticism, has finally become a poor in life and sunk into weakness and the degradation. That is what the um, uh, point of um, degradation is here in the course. Modern India, with its trend towards national asceticism, has finally become a poor in life and sunk, sunk into weakness and the degradation. Again. Again, poverty is no more a necessity of a social life than disease. Still in the course, no more necessity of a organized social life than disease of the natural body. Body, natural body, disease has got natu na uh, na na natural, but the thing is that here, this is not the necessity at all. False habits of life, false habits of life again. Um, and in ignorance of our true organization is, are both uh, the cases, the um, piquant cases of uh, avoidable disorder. So, here in the course, beautiful, it is a beautiful aphorism, you can remember, you can recall it. Poverty is no more a necessity of origin, organized social life than, than disease of the natural body. Again, again, false habits of life. False habits of light, life and an ignorance of our true organization. False habits of the life and an ignorance of our true organization are both cases the piquant causes of the of an avoidable disorder. So these two things must be taken care of. Again, in 197, here in the course, don't dream that uh, when thou hast got rid of material poverty, don't think initially is here in the course don't dream that when thou hast got rid of the material poverty man will even be so happy or satisfied or a society freed from the evil uh, ills troubles and problems that never you dream suppose uh, you, some, you have uh, got rid of um, material poverty then the condition of the man and of course their spiritual destination will change it is not at all possible Men will um, even be so happy or satisfied or society be freed from ills, troubles and problems. Then this is only the first and the lowest necessity, first and the lowest necessity to get to get rid of poverty. Because so many waves, so many steps you have to uh, cross forward, you have to move forward, you have to um, climb forward. While the soul within remains defectively organized, that is the main cause of the, you know, poverty and all. So when, that is a great thing Sri Aurobindo has quoted, when the soul remains defectively organized, not well organized, not ill organized, defectively organized, there will always be the outward unrest, disorder and the revolution. So unless otherwise the, you are living in the soul, you are not organizing, unless otherwise you are organizing your soul in a definitive, in a perfect, correct and of course definitive method. So naturally they are in the society, the existence of the outward unrest, disorder and revolution is inevitable, it will happen. 198 we can find. Dizzy. 
will always return to the body if the soul is flawed again if initially it was got quoted that uh, defectively organized second uh, lines here in the course if the soul is flawed then disease will be returning to body for the scene of the mind as the secret cause of the scene of the body very interestingly the most important thing is that scene of the mind is the secret cause of the scene of the body body never commits any error or goes for the scene the scene and these errors everything has been created initially in the mind in the mental state then the body becomes the slave to carry out the planning so to poverty and trouble will always return to man in society poverty and trouble will always return to the man in society so long as the mind of the race is subjected to egoism Great aspect we'll know. We'll try to analyze, get a, um, emphasize a little bit in deep. Disease will always uh, return to the body if soul is flawed. Second, scene of the mind is the secret of cause of the scene of the body. Third, so the conclusions uh, in this aphorism. So poverty and tr trouble will always return to man in society as long as the mind of the race is subjected to the. egoism that is the egoism is the root cause of all these troubles all these disorder all these uh, disease man anyway again sir when the comes to the part of the religion and the philosophy while consider considering the gyano person of the third sand aphorism religion and philosophy seeks to rescue man from his ego very interesting religion and philosophy seeks to rescue man from the ego then the kingdom of heaven within will be spontaneously reflected in an external divine city <laughs> just imagine how uh, it is possible how can we perform it it is beautiful thing religion and the philosophy always seek to rescue man from his ego then if it is done the kingdom of heaven within kingdom of heaven within will be spontaneously reflected in an external divine city again sir in the goes for the medieval christian society sir in the course beautifully medieval christianity said to the race man thou art in thy earthly life in an evil thing and a worm before god medieval christianity they focused and of course they claimed they uh, treated man in their just use use how man they treated men from the past line you can imagine man thou art in thy earthly life an evil evil thing and worm before the god renounce then egoism and what is the condition renounce the egoism and uh, live uh, for a future state and submit uh, thyself to god and his priest that's what renounce your egoism that is the first condition second uh, live in, for a future state then and uh, submit the self to god and his uh, priest that is a great uh, uh, teaching from medieval christianity the result we are not ever good for humanity result we are not ever good for uh, humanity then modern this was actually medieval it verse verses modern knowledge says to the race man thou art an ephemeral animal and no more to nature than the ant and the earthworm same way just imagine sir in the course initially man uh, thy earthly life of evil thing and worm before the body here modern knowledge says to the race man thou art the ephemeral animal short living and no more to nature than the ant and the uh, earthworm immediately dear directly indicates If the direct indication is that uh, simply man is no way superior to this uh, ants and uh, earthworm is the transitory speck only in the universe you are just a transitory because man is it we are the transitory stage so many ways so many paths have to gone uh, so has to be um, covered and uh, so many steps to be gone so so many many things has to be changed leave then for the state and submit thyself ant like to the trained administrator and a scientific expert because they have to work on you they have to follow go for the um, so called long shot future so will this gospel succeed any better than the, the other medieval christianity go, uh, went that way modern you know knowledge he has also quoted man like this do is here in the course 
is there is will this gospel succeed any better than the other same way same thing same principle which is better you think what is the um, may most uh, remarkable uh, difference between um, uh, this medieval Christianity and this uh, modern knowledge? Absolutely no, almost similar. So how are we, how do we feel that we can differentiate? That's what's here in the put the question before us. Will this gospel succeed any better than the other? Same way, same format, same ideology. How can you feel that one is superior to other? Again. Uh, after Christianity and medi uh, medieval um, knowledge, uh, modern knowledge, we are going coming to Vedanta. So says rather, man, thou art of one nature and the substance with God. Vedanta, um, uh, in the Indian ancient philosophy, it is crossing, it is coming over to our view. We um, behold the great things. Vedanta says rather, man, thou art one nature and substance with God. Then one nature, one soul with um, thy fellow man. So, how you can progress then to the you know, utter divinity? Leave for God in thyself and in others. That is the Vedanta great thing it is told. Because you know, there is, we, can, we don't find any, uh, while discussing the religion and philosophy, we don't find distinguish about the modern knowledge and the medieval Christianity. But actually, when we focus upon the Indian Vedanta philosophy, we can find, Men thou art one of nature and of substance with God, one soul with a fellow man, then what is what you have to do? Awake and progress then to thy utter divinity, leave for God in thyself and in others. The gospel, again, still in the course, this gospel which has given only to a few, most now, must now be offered to all mankind for its deliverance. So, you are in the course because people are very much dogmatic, very much con confusing. They are also that much adamant. So, they are living in their principle, their religion, their philosophy and their dogma. But here in the course here, this Vedantic view must be, it is well given only to a few because who are followers and the preachers and of course who know uh, Vedanta. But here in the finally ex uh, expresses his concern. Now it must be offered to the mankind for its deliverance. Without this view, deliverance of the mankind is uh, next to impossible. Again, we are going for uh, 202 up, up regime number. So here, the human race is always progresses most when most is asserts to the importance to nature, its freedom and its universality. So that is the, you know, the progress of the human race always progresses most, most when most it asserts to the importance to nature, importance to nature, its freedom and its universality. When these three things are done, importance to nature, freedom and the universality, then human race at large, it is bound to progress and it is it will progress. Then here in the course of the animal man, animal man is, an, is the obscure starting point, very interesting, obscure starting point, the present natural man is a varied and a tangled mid road. Starting point, animal man. Second, we can find the present natural man is varied and tangled midpoint. But the supernatural man, third, we can find supernatural man, the luminous and transcendent goal of the human journey. So you can find three um, uh, um, uh, splendid versions on man. She are been the focused upon three types of man she considered. Animal man is obscure starting point. Present natural man varied and tangled midpoint. But supernatural man, number three, the luminous and transcendent goal of our lumin human journey. Again, we are going to the final point, concluding point of the jnana. That is on point number, aphorism number 204. Life and action culminate, life and action culminate and eternally crowned for thee when thou hast attained the power of symbolizing and manifesting in every thought and act, in wealth getting, wealth having or the wealth spending, in home and government and society, everywhere we can find during the course, life and action culminate 
and are eternally crowned for thee when thou hast attained the power of symbolizing and manifesting, power of symbolizing and manifesting in every thought and act. In thought and act, again, wealth getting, wealth having, and wealth spending. And in, again, in home and government and society, in art, in literature and life, the one immortal in lower mortal being. So the one immortal in lower mortal being. Lower mortal being normally, you know, Gatasya Hindu Vangbutu, here we are struggling, we have taken death for granted, but thing is that we must take life and action, culminate and eternally crowned for them, for thee, when thou hast attained the power of symbolizing and manifesting in every thought and act, in wealth getting, wealth having and wealth spending, in home and government and society, in art and literature and, I, and of course in life. So he who does so, really attends the one immortal still in the course the one immortal in this lower mortal being it is a great 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 aphorism of course we find here in our study discussion it is from everything from sri aurobindo he has quoted beautifully on religion and philosophy compared medieval christianity with the modern knowledge and finally found the vedantic view and of course later we have seen the animal man middle man of course supernatural man then we can find the best discussion we have ever discussed on poverty, existence and uh, eradication. So naturally I think it is a great discussion right now. And he, with this we are concluding the portion of our discussion on Jnana. Next uh, we will move forward towards the next aphorism um, caption karma. But here actually after this great discussion we know on Jnana that is uh, symbolizing uh, so many ways, uh, starting from uh, the Vedantic point, uh, starting from, from medieval and of course uh, modern philosophy. So uh, it is a really heart touching and of course it is uh, creating and it is creative is beyond all doubt. Thank you. Bande Matram.